Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my talk. So today I'll be talking about uh, this uh, our work on on this title. Under this title, everyone has some personal stuff designing to support digital privacy with shared mobile phone use in Bangladesh. This is a joint work with uh, Mohammed Romail Hawk uh, from Market University, who couldn't come to Kai because he didn't get his visa, unfortunately. Uh, with Irtaja Haider from uh, Georgia Tech, Jay Chen from New York University, Abu Dhabi, and Nicola Dell from Cornell Tech. So this is the brief outline of uh, my presentation today. First, I'll try to introduce the problem to you, and then I'll be discussing some related work, and then we'll, I will show you the findings that we got from our study, and then I'll go through discussion and conclusion. So... What is the problem with uh, what 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 is the problem with shared mobile phone devices, or what kind of privacy challenges do people uh, get with this? So before going that, let's let's look at how privacy and mobile phone technology. Uh, these two things were situated historically. Most existing mobile phone devices use access control and authentication mechanisms that are based on Western paradigm of personal computing, which assumes that a device is primarily owned and used by a single person. However, a growing body of work coming from the global south suggests that this model of personal computing is not well suited to populations living in South Asia, where intermediated access and device sharing are very common practices among local communities. Hence, users in South Asia are faced with a fundamental trade-off. On one hand, they want need or are compelled to share devices with others, usually with friends and families, and refusing to share could have potentially serious negative consequences, social consequences mostly. On the other hand, as one of our participants said, everyone has some personal stuff that they would prefer to keep private and not share with others. So there is this tension. And in this work, the contribution of our, our work is to explore this state of via a prototype design that we call Nirapod, a Bangladesh word which means protected or safe. So Nirapod provides a mechanism for enabling tiered privacy that allows people to share their phones while keeping the personal data private. So in our, in our work, we try to address two research questions. First, what are the privacy challenges and tensions that arise when people share devices? And what are the benefits, challenges, and trade-offs of our tiered privacy model, Nirapod? So before going there, let's look at the historical development of computer privacy in, in HCI literature. The modern definition of privacy is heavily influenced by Western liberal ideologies that considers an individual's private information as an inseparable part of their identity and a basic ingredient of a functional democracy. This idea of privacy as personal possession over one's properties later extended to the world of information technology. The digital privacy of computer users later became vulnerable to intrusions as computing turned more personalized, ubiquitous, and connected. Discussions around privacy are therefore a growing concern in Western academia, especially as privacy rights are frequently violated. Numerous studies have been conducted that focuses on, on, that focus on improving the usability of a specific security and privacy mechanisms, uh, including password constructions, text password alternatives, behavior and social network, among others. In addition to this, researchers have also studied privacy in a diverse range of settings, including on social media, mobile devices, or internet access by a specific group of people. However, all of this prior HCI work has mostly focused on Western population and has been dominated by liberal notion of privacy. Many practices around digital technologies in Global South have not gotten enough attention in this. So now, many privacy scholars have discussed how the idea of privacy is dependent on context and may not be transferable from one context to another. Notably, Helen Nissenbaum's theory of privacy as a contextual integrity argues that what is considered as privacy, private information is contextual, temporal, and audience dependent. And again, Hopstead has described that the individualistic culture of the West is very different from the collectivist culture of China 
or in Indian subcontinent. Their collectivist values often caused a person's identity as a free individual to be supplanted by or create tension with their familial, communal, cultural, and religious identities. Its CI 4D scholarship has long been studying, analyzing, and designing for various challenges rooted in these collective values. However, very few design initiatives have been undertaken to address the privacy challenges associated with these collective values. So now let's get this a more concrete view. What are the design challenges here that we are using? So many existing authentication mechanisms are designed to enable people to secure their private data on mobile phone devices, including passwords, uh, pattern locks, and biometrics. Each of these mechanisms may be applied at the level of the entire device or for specific applications. However, in South Asia, device sharing is very common. Using a password to protect a device or an app may make it unshareable, while not using a password may result in the data being unprotected. Although several vendors have enabled the creation of multiple user accounts on a single device, prior work suggests that people do not use those mechanisms because of poor usability or because logging out of one's account before sharing it with another would imply a lack of trust or raise suspicion by suggesting that there is something to hide. So the contribution of our work is to explore a mechanism for enabling tiered privacy that allows people to share their phones while keeping their, their personal data private. We now discuss this, this design in detail. So we designed Nirapod, a mobile phone application that allows the users to hide their sensitive photos in a shared mobile phone without causing suspicion in the mind of the sharers. Nirapod uses a tiered privacy mechanism that aims to allow people to share their phones with others while keeping their personal data private and reducing the possibility of being pressured into revealing their private data. Our intervention enables a single user to have multiple accounts with the existence of the multiple accounts kept secret. Our initial design supports a two-tiered model. The model enables a person to create a shared account that contains data that they are willing to share and that is assigned a password that they will be shared with their friends and families. Simultaneously, they can create a secret account that contains data that they prefer to keep secret and that uses a password that they do not share with anyone. So this is how our app looked like. Our design uses a password interface with users setting one password to access the shared gallery and another to access the secret gallery. When a user installs the application and opens it for the first time, they are prompted to create two passwords, a shared and a secret password. Then they are directed to a single login screen where they can enter either one of their passwords depending on the account that they wish to open. After logging into one of the accounts, the user is able to perform all normal gallery-related operations for that account. Using this design, a person can select photos they are willing to share, place them in the shared gallery, and safely share the password for the gallery. At the same time, they can place photos that they wish to keep private in their secret gallery, protected by a different password that is not shared with anyone. So, to understand how Nirapol's tiered privacy acts with the, with the privacy tension over shared devices, we have conducted a three-week long field study in Dhaka, Bangladesh. We recruited participants through a public social media post and announcements at local universities, word of mouth, and personal contacts of the authors. Participants attended an in-person onboarding session. We conducted a 15-minute semi-structured qualitative interview in Bengali that sought an understanding of participant experience with technology, their privacy concerns and preferences, device uses of shared habits and demographics. After the interview, we installed the Nirapod app on the participant's phone and conducted a 30-minute training session to ensure that they understood the app and how to use it. After installing the app, after installing the app, and training, and training participants, we asked them to use Nirapod in their daily lives for a period of three weeks. During this time, they were able to contact their researchers if they experienced any problems or challenges using the app. The system was instrumented to log all the users' data, including when participants use the app, featured, features used, 
what actions taken, and so on. The interview asked about participants' experiences using the app, challenges, and uses, uh, and issues that they encountered, how it affected their privacy, how they shared their data and their passwords with other people during the deployment, and suggestion for improvement. So this is the this is how our our participants' demography looked like. Uh, there were 15 women and six men in total. Most of them had more than three years of experiences of using smartphones. Most of them were in a family or in a relationship, and all of them would share their devices uh, with others. Their monthly income had a median of 361 US dollar. So first we uh, we turn to see what kind of like uh, sharing practices they already had. And uh, the people that our participants shared the device uh, included uh, significant others, friends, roommates, siblings, other relatives, and parents. And the stories that they shared with us, uh, uh, it was fr from those, it was clear that sharing occurred in a, is a, the sharing was a more of a cultural practice than coming from economic need. One, one prominent theme that we found that was friend or relative, they asked to use the participants phone for a specific task such as taking a photo or playing game and then browsing through their personal data without permission and our participants were frustrated about this. Then another theme that surfaced was for participants, parents or elders to scold them if they discovered contents that they disapproved of. Particularly if this involved photos or messages from a boyfriend or girlfriend, there were also cases of misunderstandings. Regardless of who the participants shared their devices with, they all expressed the concern that sharing would result in their personal privacy being compromised. Now let's see how Nirapod, how, how, how Nirapod to try to change this scenario. So this was the user's data uh, of Nirapod. Our participant exhibited varying level of uh, app users. The mean number of days people use the app was 6.1 days as shown in the figure at the right bottom. Some participants used the app only a couple of days while others used it almost every day. You, we, we used two other matrices to evaluate our users, the number of the logins into each account and the number of photos imported into the Nirapod app. Again, we see that the participant users varied for each of these matrices. This data suggests that participants were generally able to use the main features of the app during the study. All participants describe how they use the app to hide their private photos. P18, who used the app for 15 out of 21 days, told us, I use this app almost every day. I imported photos, exported photos most of the days. I used the app at least two or three times. Others also expressed their satisfaction using the Apple app. So now when we ask participants what kind of photos they stored in their shared and secret accounts, their responses vary. For example, 12 participants said that they stored family photos in their shared account while the rest hid those photos in their secret account. Participants explained how their decision of which account to use for particular photos were shaped by their relationships with the people that they shared their phones with. For example, P14 said, I used secret gallery for my personal photos, photos of me and my boyfriend. I don't want to share those photos with anybody. All participants in, in, in post-study interviews described how they now felt much more secure sharing their devices when using our app. One such participant said, if anyone uh, from my home wants to see my phone, I can give it to them easily now. I don't even need to lock my phone. No participant reported having their secret photos exposed to others at any point of the study. For example, P21, who shared her phone with her boyfriend, described how she stored some secret photos in her phone and she did not want to want him to see. She said, when he checked my phone, he found both the built-in gallery and Nirapod. He wanted to check Nirapod and I gave him my password, uh, but I was still safe. He never knew there was another secret gallery there. Now, however, the uh, people that participants shared their phones with were not always happy if they discovered that the photos could be hidden using our app. Several women reported facing these challenges, and in most cases, it was, uh, it was their husbands and boyfriends who were not unhappy. In most cases, they were happy in the beginning, but when they knew that their wife could hide personal information from them, they became suspicious. 
Although participants generally found the Nirapod easy and useful, we also found that there were challenges regarding remembering the passwords. Some of them said that now they had to remember two passwords, and some of them were scared that they could put wrong passwords uh, to open the wrong gallery, and that could bring them a disaster. So finally, our post study interview data also yielded an interesting theme in which participants described being suspicious of our experimental app and our intention as researchers. For example, we received questions regarding where and how participants' photos were being stored. We explained to them that the photos of Nirapod were encrypted and did not leave their device. As a result, no one, including the researchers, had access to their photos. Despite this explanation, four participants were still worried about it. The, de the developers would have access to their secret photos. Well, in discussion, uh, our findings yield uh, numerous insights that explored how participants care about and manage their privacy in their personal data while also sharing devices. Um, data from our own participant interviews and from our prior work suggest that the fundamental issue is not that people in South Asia do not have personal data that they wish to keep secret. Rather, they want to maintain their personal privacy and also be able to safely share devices with friends and family. Our tiered design explicitly supports this broader users model in an effort to help participants manage this trade-off. Our design attempts to provide users with, with plausible deniability by providing a single entry point to multiple accounts. As such, people cannot tell from looking at the app logging page that multiple accounts exist. Instead, the system determines which account to open when. Although our sample size is too small, to make any general claims about gender and privacy, our data does hint at a number of potentially gender-related privacy issues. Our experience in the field was that the participants who were women were generally more concerned about the privacy and potential data breaches. Um, we have a number of limitations of our study. First, it was only conducted on 21 people, and it, this was not like a very big study. Maybe having more people would generate more interesting results. Second, uh, introducing new technology, new technology might also have some bias uh, to the participants, especially in the global south, who are not that much familiar with different technologies, and maybe other results are uh, embedded, uh, embedded with some of those biases. And third, all of our participants were very much concerned of their privacy, which may not depict the general picture of Bangladesh. Uh, in summary, our research explores the problem of uh, how to provide better privacy for people who share devices. We designed an exploratory prototype based on this concept of tiered privacy, although these findings constitute a valuable uh, step forward in designing technology that better fits people's users pattern. Future studies are needed to explore how this model might further impact or challenge notions of privacy in South Asia. Thank you. Any questions? I'm pretty good. Thank you. Well, I guess. Can you just repeat the question? Oh, yeah. So uh, Neha was asking how this app uh, can be interpreted uh, in terms of women's empowerment, uh, especially in South Asia, which is a, uh, which is a, like a problem that many of us are concerned of. Uh, well, uh, I, I think it's, it's a great question. The way we see it is that um, the, the shared, you know, like the devices. It's not always like shared equally. Our field data says that although we, we call them shared devices, most of the time women are kind of forced to share their data with their husbands and that the thing is not always like equally other way around. So there is a, uh, so th there is a component of surveillance uh, involved in it. And designing this kind of interfaces will, will, gi will, will give the women um, a tool to fight against that kind of surveillance. And uh, if that is successful, I believe the women will be empowered uh, to do things uh, that are not being monitored by their husbands or family. So that, that is the connection that I can see there. Yeah? Just building on that, I think it's a flawed argument. 
because the idea is not to give them a, a secret passage, but to address the issue of how men seek control. Yep. And I think yep. we need to address that. Definitely. Sorry. No, no, no. That's a, that's a that's a very good point, and that is the that that is the main concern of uh, of uh, overall problem. Not with the with the design of this app. Even this app, you know, like uh, gets in a larger scale. People may also ask, why is somebody using that app? So we also believe that the solution will not come only from this technocentric view of like throwing an app in the field. There needs to be social changes so that like men, women, everybody uses that app so that like using this kind of app becomes the norm, and so if somebody uses that app that does not